with a, a house band, like, you know, it's like a punk band that's going to be like doing a set at the beginning, at the end, and then like a little bit just to play on and off uh, comics, like on and off stage. Um, oh, that's fun. Do they ever like if if there's like a comic playing and then they tell a joke, do they ever like come in with musical interludes? Well, we haven't done the show yet, but I would also hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you should do it. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if there's like sort of like theme music being played at the same time, but it's the most obtrusive shit you could imagine. Right. Just this dirty punk rock band being like, does this feel right? I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have no a- empathy. No, try to scream your material. Right. Over. <laughs> <laughs> your jokes suck for this. And you're like, well, you're the house band. Okay. Just. Yeah. Keep it. Yeah, the band just heckles all the comedians. <laughs> right. <laughs> Throw stuff at them. And then the comedians can heckle the band back. I mean, mm. it could just not even be a show then. It yeah. could just be could just people be who fight. shouldn't be doing a Absolutely. show together. Yeah. Uh, people who don't like each other or organically get along. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people would buy tickets for that. I, I would. I mean, hello. That's what we all watch theater for. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have a cute little butt. Here, here we I'm, are. I'm so here flattered. Here we are. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that about yourself? Do you know I don't? I'm not that flexible, so I don't get that angle very often. You don't ever Liar. just crane the neck 360 <laughs> degrees and then no. do kind of a forward fold and just. Well, I'm it? well. I'm very sad that I'm not able to because I found out that I have a genetic disorder that would give people flexibility, but for some reason, for me, does not give me that angle. Okay, what angle does it give you? Not much. I don't I don't have the I I will a pr- uh, an isosceles do you have <laughs> this this genetic thing Yeah it's Ehlers Danlos syndrome which like means you don't make an, quite enough collagen as your body should I haven't got an official diagnosis but I'm going to see a rheumatologist okay. for like a proper diagnosis and like I have very I have very bendy thumbs What's a rhubarbologist going to do for you <laughs> <laughs> It's going to bake me into a sweet little pie and <laughs> Ooh, yum. With strawberries and lime. Yeah, no, it like, I have very bendy thumbs and I have stretchy skin. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah, but um, there are other people that are like very, very flexible, and the, but I'm not. My joints are very normal otherwise, except for my thumbs. Okay, I'm always wondering what your joints are like. So. I could Everyone tell. Everyone is talking about this. Constantly. Everyone is. Everyone is talking about Lucas's joints. I mean, and my butt and how cute my butt is. That's what only I'm one person. About. Only one That's person. O- yeah. I'm the only person. You're the only person that ever. matters, Gabby. Ever? Yeah, our guest doesn't at all. Just and you. and who is our guest this week? I'm Who's so our glad guest? you asked. Well, well, first off, welcome, uh, uh, ladies and germs, to a new episode of Two Nosy Meerkats. Yeah. And we have a marvelous guest for you today. The, uh, the co-host, marvelous Miss Maisel. The marvelous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is uh, one of the co-hosts of an upcoming uh, comedy and punk uh, combo show. Which we were just discussing. Which we were just discussing uh, called Fun Gutter. You can see it. This is coming out on Monday next week, uh, video on Tuesday. And so it'll be on the Friday, right? Friday the, 11th, uh, the 12th. Friday, November twelfth. Yes. Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, co-host of Fun Gutter coming. I'm stock, so I'll miss it. What but it doesn't the... matter for the audience. Yeah, I'm going to the you know the the Woodstock 1960s. I'm I'm time traveling. I'm gonna that... see some uh, Jimi Hendrix. I love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like you were making that up on the spot to like try to make an alibi. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah sorry i can't go to your show i uh, i have to time travel that day yeah so, no i am gonna be in woodstock but I, i'll be sad to miss it we'll anyway do another one give a round of applause for bailey, bailey pope. pope yay thanks for having me yeah of thank course. you so much for coming on yeah so <laughs> and that's it that's the end that's, that's the end of the podcast that's the podcast yeah i i wanted to give lucas space for anything else he might want to add before i where are you, you time traveling to? Yeah. Where am I time traveling to? I am time traveling to uh, the early 1920s. Okay. Yeah. I see that for you. Just to show people, hey, in 100 years time, it's exactly the same, guys. You're just going to be like telling stories yeah. with your voice because yes. um, you're already there um, on the radio. <laughs> do I, do I sa- oh, um, I thought you were going to say that I sound old. No, you you could do that old timey like, yeah, see? 
you know? <laughs> 1940s like mobster speak yeah yeah instead same, of yeah, filming yeah. in your bathroom you film in like the ward sorry maybe oh they no don't... the speakeasy speakeasy bathroom Ooh, the speak mm. maybe they don't have film yet do they no they do have film in the uh not sound film they just have the the the, the, the talkies ain't been around that much there yet it is. yeah there, there it is, is. Look i can see you just coming right in front of like a polished brass drum of some sort to get your reflection you know a brass <laughs> drum <laughs> I don't know. It's I mean, the new social media brass drum. To me, that's that's the equivalent of a mirror in, in, in a time that already had a I mirror. I think they had yeah. mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like where you're going with this. He films it. He can't find a mirror in the ward. So he films oh. it in front of a brass drum. They can't have mirrors there. Uh, no. Yeah. Because mirrors reasons. steal your soul. There's mm. that. There's I thought that. there was gingers who did that. I didn't think it was mirrors. They also didn't exist yet. Uh, yeah, they when were, were invented. When were they invented? Oh. It was like the 80s. 1980s? Yes, 1980s. I, yes. And then it was like a couple of gingers were like running around, but they weren't that popular. And wait, then... wait, so gingers invented themselves? Or? It was like a weird mutation. Like someone had sex with like a, a redheaded monkey. And oh. then, but they won't admit it to this Much day. like an STD, just gingers were found in the <laughs> wild and then fostered in a lab. And then gingers went on to, there There weren't that many of them. And the first famous ginger ever actually is uh, Lucas Hedges of okay. Boy Erased. Not a clue. Not a clue. But yeah. I like this. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I have no idea who that is. It's weird because really? like I may, I, I did, in because Lucas Hedges is in, in one of my movie posters that he's I. He's in that movie. Yeah. Ladybird, Lard yeah, Ladybird, yeah, Lard, Lard, Lard bib, Lard bib, yeah, yeah. Lucas, you should tell everyone about your hobby of doing this because yes. I don't think the audience. So one knows. of so uh, something you can see, I've done like a mini series like on TikTok called Corrected Movie Posters. So in college, what I did is I started taking like ensemble movie posters and then rearranging the letters to ba- just make like the silliest thing I could. Okay. Yeah. That's what you do in. Co- I didn't go to college, so I guess I just missed out on that part oh yeah um, what what was like did you build any hobbies in like the 18 to 22 uh age period for you i was gonna any ask, odd yeah. yeah uh i mean i have a really obsessive personality so i get into things and then i go fucking hard okay. and so i probably had a bunch of things but i'm trying to think of, like at that point i was still doing music like i i was in like hardcore mu- and like metal bands mm-hmm. um into that period and uh, so that would have been like a lot of my time um, nothing outside of that. I feel like that's where like most of my energy went. It was just like work and music. Gotcha. What instrument do you play? I was about to ask. I I, I did vocals. I did like screaming vocals. Whoa! Mm. What was yeah. your voice part? What was my what? Yeah, w- w- like uh, what was uh, your range? Mainly like mid to highs. Okay. Um, so like I mean I don't know how to describe it like in a normal way, but like instead of like low growling kind of sounds, mm-hmm. it's a little bit more like. Um, just screaming because you're like emotional screaming right. level. Um, and some of the highs, I can't describe it other than like a pig squealing, which is super hot. And I got that. That's I'm awesome. aroused. Very. <laughs> that yeah, that was uh, that was a long time. I, I think I did that kind of vocal for a lot of different bands for probably. Um, like four or five years. Wow. Did you write your own songs? I mean, I, I, I don't know who you'd cover. Yeah, yeah, I know I might have wrote my own songs. Yeah. Um, I would imagine they sucked. I don't remember any of them. Um, well, your musical was... career turned out amazingly. Yeah, no, I'm killing here. Yeah. it. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I think that half a com- uh, like stand-up comics just think that they're like just the new punk, ro- you know, rock, <laughs> you know, stars. One day I'll be the new Bailey Pope of right. comics. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> on meerkats today we have the bailey pope of comedy who first. also happens to be the bailey pope of music <laughs> that's crazy how'd we get her what can i ask like did it take a toll on your voice did you like lose your voice at times or when you first start doing that kind of vocal you do mm. lose your voice because you're doing it wrong right um but uh, there's a way to do it where you're not actually straining your you're, you're not strained mm. so i could have a conversation right after a set oh that's I'm glad to hear. Like, how long did it take to learn? Because, like, it was I, probably like six months to a year before okay. I was not losing my voice anymore. I'm not kidding. I would actually love you to teach me that because mm. I don't think I could do it anymore. Really? No, I don't. So, think wait, so now you would throw out your voice if you tried. Well, the thing is, so uh, 
like as a trans woman, like I like did like exercises to change my voice. And oh. so I don't like I can't speak like I used to. I like and I I've, I've tried sometimes when I'm driving, I'll like try to scream along with some old songs mm. and it's terrible. It's so bad. Whoa. What are those? Sorry, we keep peppering you with questions, but this, I guess that's what a podcast is. But because uh, <laughs> <laughs> we forgot the genre, what are those vocal exercises like? Like, do you have one coach or like what happens? No, it was literally, I just watched a bunch of YouTube videos about um, like understanding how voices work and um, like where you're, I mean, I'm sure with doing voices, mm. um, you kind of understand like there's ways to change your pitch or change your right, intonations yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, so I just watched some videos. And then when I was driving, I would just practice for a while, like um, when I was first like transitioning. Wow. Yeah. So, so like, how would you say like, like when you like see like friends, like maybe from home or from people like pre uh, vocal transition or when uh -huh. you started doing exercises like how different would you say your voice is now from what it used to be oh very very different yeah very different yeah okay. like very um i like every once in a while i'll see like an old video like you know like your phone will be like oh nine years ago or yeah. you know this thing happened and i'm like oh that's gross um mm. i don't i don't know that person uh yeah it's way different um but i think it's you know like it i don't know i think anybody that ever if people do try to change their voice when they transition or for whatever reason one would do that, it's such an mm. annoying process. I don't know right. why you'd do it otherwise, but um, it, like you're kind of just, you're still kind of stuck with the way your vocal cords have grown over time. Mm. And so there's only so much you can do, but right. I don't know. I think it's different from person to person. Well, I would imagine it would be sort of like, I remember I saw like an interview with Madonna and I remember her doing like a sort of bad English accent, but I realized, oh, she probably genuinely does do that all the time. And I guess it's like something similar to like just through like intention, it becomes your nature. For sure. Yeah. Madonna, I think is a bit of a different case because I think she just went. Why she... would you say that? This is the Madonna <laughs> of comedy, right? <laughs> Wait, which Madonna? Oh, <laughs> Madonna Jones. Oh, my neighbor. Okay. <laughs> not Madonna Alberson. No, no, okay. not no. Madonna. Madonna Alberson is my other neighbor. Uh, oh. And not... For some reason, I went Madonna Schreib Vogel, which is Joe Exotic's real name. <laughs> Madonna Schreib Vogel? Yeah, that's his that's his real last name, Schreib Vogel. Okay, wow. but his name is not Madonna. I'm really dumb. So that's I what disagree. I thought you meant. <laughs> I was like, Should we take a moment? I don't know. Do you do ads? I feel like maybe you need a second. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We bring yeah. all right. Well, Bailey, that's enough time for today. This Thank you so yeah. much. To this. Didn't expect oh. to get roasted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you are doing a roast soon, right? I just yes. did one. I just did oh, one. yeah. Wait uh, against against uh, who? Karthik, uh, Raj. Karthik Raj. How did did you uh, win? I did win. It was oh, really yeah. close. He actually did uh, way better than I expected, mm. which it sounds mean, but I just didn't see that this is he for you, could Karthik. be as mean as he was. Okay. So it was, yeah, it was fun. I saw him in a roast battle a few weeks ago, and he really surprised me. He had like really good cutting joke. I was yeah. like, damn, he's good. Yeah, I feel like this is the year of the roast battle. Like oh, yeah. everyone is roast battling. Yeah. And coming up is a roast battle between you and Chris Schur. Am I correct? I have no. I don't know anything about that. But oh, um, never maybe. mind. Well, you may be finding this out happen. for the first time. But I'm down. I mean, for sure. But I believe I, you're I, roasting Chris Schur at some point because she told me that. Wow, is this how I you find out was, that you're I roasting guess. somebody? This is, is on a podcast. listeners. If you're trying to get into comedy, this is the world of comedy. <laughs> just yeah. walk into a place with a with a lot Any of intention place. and just say you're there to do comedy, and they'll let you. And that's how you start. Sadly, I think that kind of is true. <laughs> like, it is funny because like I actually was talking to a few comedians the other day about a certain comedian whose name I will not mention, but she just walked in the cellar, just said she was on the lineup, and like the person at the door just like assumed this was someone who was recently passed, and they just didn't know this comedian yet and so she walked on stage and started doing material totally breaking the lineup what? just said that just walked in with a purpose just decided she wanted to do some time and now she's like she has a temporary ban from the comedy cellar oh, okay. <laughs> yeah i was gonna be so mad if it was like a success story and like, she no, no, crushed no. <laughs> and today that woman is chelsea handler feel old yet feel old yet <laughs> 
Esty's new favorite comic is exactly. one that skips the line. Yep. Holy, she no. just walked in. Yeah. But yeah, and this is how you do roast battles now. Just like say you're going to roast Bailey Pope and eventually she'll roast you. Yeah. That that is something I almost wish. And we'll get back to roast. Mm -hmm. But I I sometimes genuinely wish because I am. I don't know if you can tell us about me, but I am so neurotic that everything I do, I am like everyone is going to notice if like I do something that is like not above board or is somehow like breaking some kind of rule. I admire almost in a sick way people who can just do that. Walk mm. in and be like, I am going to break this rule and just see if it works. Well, what was it like for you? What was your experience? Uh, was it your first roast battle? It was my first roast battle. How did how uh, did you feel? I, I actually got more nervous than I thought I would um, just because it's such a different energy than when you're on stage doing your own material. Mm. Um, and... Uh, I, I don't typically like memorize anything. Um, I typically like when I'm doing a set, um, especially if it's something newer, I just have general points that I want to like get to. Mm. And so I'm not used to um, like memorizing something that I want to feel organic and you know, that kind of thing. And so I had just had a couple different things that were, like, were taking me out of my comfort zone. Mm. And so I was a lot more nervous than I thought I would be, but uh, overall it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's funny being in an environment like that, mm. like as, you know, so many trans people like would not put themselves in a position to sure. be made fun of because it's it's you're just a target typically, um, not even at roast battles. And so when you go into that, it's like an interesting environment. Um, and then but like typically anybody that does roast battles knows that like if you agreed to be here, it's because you're also broken in this way. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're yeah. doing this on purpose. You agreed to be hurt mm. by another person that you like and so yeah. it was it was fun but it was like a total different experience at any point did you like define parameters with the other person at first that's like you can mm. talk about this you can talk about this i'd really prefer you stay away from this or yeah. is that kind of we met up um one day just to like exchange info and all i said was like don't talk about my kid um but that's like good. how are you gonna, i mean i don't I, mean, I guess anybody could make fun of anything but yeah i was like don't talk about my kid but otherwise i don't really care what you say mm. and actually i told him you know i was like seeing like i kind of gave him information about my transition and he at first he was like oh i'm not really gonna do that kind of thing it was it's probably gonna be more just like appearance kind of things and i was like really pussy <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, he definitely ended up going like the trans route, which like he had some right. some heavy hitters for sure. Oh, amazing! <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you say that I, I remember. Well, you just said that you feel like you know maybe not many trans people would opt to go in because like it's such like it's, it's such a volatile environment. But like one of my, I'm sure you've seen Robin Tran. Uh, I know. No. no? Oh, she's oh, great. Because I've I looked up so many roast battles before one of, before my own a few weeks ago, and Robin Tran is like one of my favorite, and she. She said one of the best roast jokes I ever saw. She said, um, uh, because she's a trans woman and she made the joke that her opponent, I forget his name, but she said, uh, I have a lot in common, uh, with his, uh, family and his girlfriend because we both have a useless dick we want to get rid of. <laughs> and that it was just one of the, it just, it's, it's stuck in my heart. I was just like, that is such a good joke. And I just like, I feel like there's just so much there just. There's so many, and, and, oh, and with so any many. person, there's so many opportunities uh, for jokes, and just that I was, it, oh, yeah. I, my, the joke that really seemed to like the uh, the the um, judges really took um, and kind of put me over the, over the edge. I think was um, I had um, I, I waited until he said some sort of dick joke, and then I was like, well, it's funny that you say that because Karthik's a lot like my former dick. Then they were both destined to be pussies. <laughs> ah, that's phenomenal so that's what Perfect. put me over the edge <laughs> oh my god that's so good there's something about roasts that are like i think what's fun about them it's not just about like being mean it's about giving a person like a form of very like highly individualized attention mm. i think then that's what that's what makes it fun i think even when an audience doesn't know the two comedians mm. for sure oh yeah absolutely yeah it's also like a, an opportunity for the audience to learn about that comedian. Oh yeah, because very because sometimes like 
uh like we were talking with david dobbins last week and his like he like he's sort of has like this stage persona very often he doesn't very often talk about his personal life but like a roast a roast battle it has to get personal and that i that's always really fun like getting like the dirt on people it's i love it i think it also says a lot about somebody if they decide to be part of it you know like i think a lot of times people would be would think that uh i would be more like um sensitive about Mm. trans stuff but i think by being there a lot of people are probably like oh okay she's like not like super tight about this shit right i think you're pretty open with like stuff about your transition oh absolutely yeah yeah i mean like i have a lot a a decent amount of material about it yeah right i mean i just i think that's awesome because i feel like there's this uh just like coming from like a cis person's experience i feel like there's like a stigma around like talking about Mm. transitioning openly because it's you don't want to say the wrong thing yeah, yeah for sure but it it kind of is like any other way of advocating for people where it's like you want to just talk to people like person to person, you know? Yeah. And then that it's, it's a shame that like part of the, you know, what uh, a lot of a lot of hate, it comes from ignorance and ignorance can be fixed by conversations. And a lot of those conversations don't happen because people are afraid of saying the wrong thing. But a lot of times it's also people aren't al- like allowing others to make mistakes. They're not mm. like allowing others to like be like to learn right so like by being open about it by having conversations and not making it weird not making it hard on people to ask questions and like then people can learn and get the fuck over it (laughs) it's not my job to educate you it's like no it's not anyone's job to do anything uh it's my joy (laughs) it's not my job to educate you it's my purpose (laughs) it's my world (laughs) i was put here yeah. Oh God! I actually transitioned only to educate people. Right. About it. I didn't even want to so do this. Brave. But, exactly. You know, oh my God. Honestly, who yeah. was it? And to tell other people to do it. Honestly, it yeah. And yeah. That's the agenda. Actually. Exactly. Um. Yeah. I'm. I. It's a. It's a pyramid scheme, actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's an MLM. Am, oh, so you <laughs> sign up other trans women? <laughs> I have five under me, and currently my downstream is fucking killing. Oh my <laughs> goodness! Do you do you report to one main trans woman or? Well, we have mm. meetings uh, a couple times a year, obviously on Fire Island, and mm-hmm. we just discuss, um, you know, the growth, and yeah, um, it's going great. It's fucking. I mean, mm. the problem is non-binary people. They have their own thing now, and uh, they're killing it. Their 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 growth. Ah. Oh my god! A competing Admirable. market. It's the Apple versus Dell of gender. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Microsoft. Where is... is I, I, I like that you went to Dell. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> where does Dell come into this? I was thinking computer brand. I don't know. No, uh, Dell or like the pansexuals. Are, oh. <laughs> in my mind... No, in my mind, Dell would be asexuals. I don't know. For some reason, Dell uh, seems like very neutral and unsexual at all. It, it reminds me of doctor offices. Dell computers, in my mind, I associate with doctor offices. Very who, sexless, very sterile zones, you know? Who's the Linux? Like the like the easiest, like the most versatile. That would be like pan pansexual, non binary mm. people. You oh know, like yeah. The ones that can do anything and like this is this is gonna get problematic really fast. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but this the is the Linux. You said. Let me take this one over as the cisgender straight away. <laughs> Please do, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I got nothing. No, I only just started like learning about like different operating systems. I got like very obsessed with like the tech side of YouTube and learning about like sure. about like coding and stuff like that. I got big on like PC building videos. I got very, very PC nerdy. culture. Oh yeah. PC Gone culture. Too far. Mm. But where's Apple culture? You know what I'm saying? I um <laughs> Apple culture. <laughs> I, um, for some reason, my mind went to Petri dish. I was like, no, bad word association, <laughs> Lucas. Apple culture is waiting online for a fucking iPhone that's the same iPhone as every other oh, yeah. iPhone. I, I actually just ordered a new iPhone specifically. Oh, you're to, the enemy. Exactly. Uh, for uh, taking videos for you lovely people for uh, this podcast. So because uh, this, yeah, my uh, my phone turned off mid record. I think it like auto locked. And so I made sure to turn off the auto lock. So hopefully we're going to get a good full video of your beautiful You're face. Really for this I mean, no one's here to yeah. watch us. No one. <laughs> here to watch Bailey. Exactly. The so beautiful. When did you get the first inkling to try stand up because I know you've been doing it for like little over a year now or like going on to like going on to yeah. Okay. yeah uh, but um so I've always been obsessed with stand up like mm. I I actually found an old VHS 
uh, a little while back, oh. like a couple months ago, um, that um, I've had since I was a teenager. Me and my friends, we used to make our own skate videos. But I also had, I was like recording stand up off of TV. And so I have like old stand up like specials like Nick Swardson and like Lewis Black and Brian Regan um, on this VHS that I found. Uh, and I was only able to play it because I like had bought the VH- VHS to like resell. That's a whole other thing. Mm. But um, yeah, so I mean, I've always been obsessed with stand up, but like I never felt like it was something that you got to decide to do. I thought it somehow mm. like like it chose you, like like you got to do it, like because somebody else said it. And uh, then when I went into, I work in hair, and like I've been a hairstylist for 15 years, and I do a lot of um, stuff where I'm on stage speaking. And so for, um, you know, close to 10 years, I've had people all along say like, oh, you should do stand up. And my answer has always been, I respect stand up too much to be a part of it. Um, Whoa. And uh, but, you know, little by little, I've gotten to the point where when I come home from like a work trip, uh, my girlfriend will be like, oh, how, you know, how were your classes? And I'll be like, oh, I was fucking funny. And uh, she's like, did they learn anything? And I was like, that's questionable. Um, <laughs> And so just little by little, it's like I would prefer to do stand up because I have jokes in my work stuff, but I don't really want to do the work part uh, for mm. a whole lot longer. I would love to hear a stand up set from you that's entirely like the inside baseball of hair. Like I've only <laughs> recently started doing like material about like my work life. Uh, well, I would imagine there's a, forget, I would imagine there are a lot of stories because in my mind, like the the hair salon is where you like divulge secrets to people. Oh yeah, I'm sure you hear some crazy shit. Oh, you hear crazy shit, but it's just more that like people are just insane. Um, okay. and also like, it, working in a salon is so insane just because you're with so many different people all day long, and you're supposed to pretend that you care about every one of them. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like so most name of names. them. Like I'm, I, all of them, most of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, Are we just ruining your business? No, that, that's that, that. I, I, most of my work for the last few years has been not salon work. Um, so I travel, I teach, um, and then I like do product development stuff too. Like I like do pro, um, I do presentations like where we come up with new products and I talk about like why it's like a trendy thing, new mm. ingredients and that kind of shit, and um. But uh, so, so little by little, I've gotten away from the salon um, just because it's not really where like my passion is. I see. So wait, when when did you start? Well, when was like the shift when you were like, I actually want to take a back seat a little bit from actually the the hands on like in the salon. Like when did you move from that to like uh, giving speeches and sort of stuff like that? Um, I mean, I've been doing stage stuff for like 10 years now, um, but. Uh, it's kind of gone from where I was like in the salon three or four days a week and then traveling um, for a couple days. Uh, and then for the last like three, four years, I've probably been doing like a day in the salon each week. So um, what exactly is it when you talk on stage? What do you talk about? So it's basically based around like education. So like teaching mm-hmm. other professionals about uh techniques oh. like uh, hair cutting techniques so i like i talk about all the cause and effect and the actual um uh terminology methodology of hair cutting mm. um it's like very i can actually get super nerdy about it um it's it has a lot to do with geometry and understanding these are scissors uh, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean and that's why there's so many bad haircuts out there some a lot of people are just like Oh, you just make it shorter. Well, okay. Oh. What is the technique like behind, you know, that meme of the woman who needs to speak to the manager? Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm. What is the technique? behind? It's also a, a kind of person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we don't need to talk about her. What I'm interested in is her hair. It wasn't when we first started doing that haircut. Right. What the, was it called? The, it was like a graduated bob, but then like little by little, it started getting long, like longer in the front and shorter in the back until like, right. it was just like Shorten. a spiky like mistake. A reverse zone. mullet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a reverse mullet. Party yeah. in the front and Karen in the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, okay, we're no so like, so like what sort of like goes on at like what. Because I'm uh, besides like talking, like what sort of stuff do do you like learn so anything we, at so these we, like, yeah, conferences? Yeah, so we like, like have models, and then like I'll do okay. a haircut on stage, and I'll talk about the the process, everything from okay. what products are being used, why they're being used, 
uh, the technique that's being used. And then like, you know, uh, depending on what the show is, whether it's a one day class or we do like um, up to like four day classes um, or sometimes it's, you know, we we're putting on like a fashion show, but then like there's education about like how we did each model and that mm. kind of thing. Um, I, I wanted to ask about, um, there's a lot of salons now that advertise that they're like specifically for queer people, like who want to come in and, and get their hair cut by queer people and get, I don't know what a queer haircut is, but I guess they want kind of like a queer haircut. Sure. Do you, we have one in the <laughs> room. <laughs> do you, do you, can you talk a little bit about like what that means? Cause it's definitely like a kind of sub community that sure. I follow on Instagram. Mm. It's, it's cool. Like if you think about like hair salons, there's hair salons and there's barber shops. Right. And those both have very different vibes. Like, uh, you know, it's not like a new thing that like a lot of like very basic ass dudes like don't want to go to a hair salon because it's like it feels very feminine. Mm. And so then uh, you have the other side where a lot of like queer people in general, like, um, you know, whether it's whoever, um, there's so much like gendered experience in getting your hair done. And so like I personally know so many uh, so many trans women who um, were afraid to go to salons at first because they didn't know if like they like how because it's an intimate thing. Yeah. You know, like going to salon, there's very few people like paid to touch you and yeah. like you're paying somebody well, to touch you. And sh- I mean, there's OK. We, they we'll pay to touch this you. Is my episode, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> go on. No, yeah. I it's you know, it's an intimate situation. And so like a lot of a lot of queer people like they like they want to be able to get like a service with somebody who understands like the vibe that they're trying to put off, but also like that they're comfortable like in the environment. Right. So like a lot of like trans male people or trans masculine people or non-binary people, if they go to a barbershop, a lot of times they're afraid that like uh, they're just going to be seen as some other gender or, or expression that, that they're not. So it can be like really intimidating. Um, You know, I, I feel like, uh, I know so many barbers that work in like dude barber shops mm-hmm. and uh, it's like such a, a vibe. It's such like a, it's intimidating. Oh, yeah. And so I can't imagine um, somebody that doesn't feel like they're, um, they like maybe naturally fit mm-hmm. in that environment. And so a lot of the, the queer like hair community now, is all about like, like we get what you're going for. Like you're safe here. Uh, you're allowed to like, you know, like you're as valid as anybody else. And it's sad that that's necessary, but it is really cool that it's such a thing now. Right. It's also that like, you don't want to see someone new each time you want to get your hair done. You ideally want to build a relationship with someone who you can see again and again, because like there's a lot of people who just sit on the physical level, just don't cut your hair the way you'd like them to. And so you want someone you can rely on. Like, yeah, I like, like, uh, like obviously like I'm sister, but like, I just for like my own hair texture, I was very afraid of going to get my hair cut because like people would try to like redefine my hairline because they didn't realize that like when you get my hair wet, it straightens. But the moment it dries, it goes, it gets like very curly again. And so like, like I always, I actually prefer going to a hair salon than like a barbershop full of dudes. Cause like in my experience, like, but I've I have occasionally had a bad haircut from women, and I've occasionally had a good haircut from men. <laughs> sure, sure, that's what I would say. Like men generally, like they don't like. I will say like I just want to trim like half an inch off, and they'll like do like crazy shit that they, just because they want to like put their stamp on sure. like my head. And I'm like, dude, why do I have a faux hawk? It's like, <laughs> and I was like, they in high literally school, literally yeah. take a stamp and put it on your head. Exactly, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I rem- no, I remember once uh it. W- I think I was like 16. I went to a barber shop pretty nearby actually. And they gave me this awful haircut and that I was just fuming oh, when I got home. And my dad said, why don't you go back and tell them your opinion? And I was like, yes, I will. And so I went back and I was like, this isn't what I asked. For. And they're like, these are like very like butch Russian dudes. And they said, you want us to put it back on? Like there. And I was like, wait, this is useless. I'm just going to go home and not come back here. Like this. Yeah. This is the, 
worst idea. Yeah. So much of barbering for a long time. It's getting better now because they're like a lot of trends have gone to like caring more about what's on top. But it's wild right. how like for so long barbering has been like just 75 percent of the attention went into like how much they faded on the side. And then they're like, all right, well, there's still some hair on top. Do you want it short or shorter? Right. And like there's just like this is the part that gets styled. Like, why do you not care about it? And so when it comes to curly hair, understanding like wet versus dry and how curly hair mm. responds to length and like how like it might look like it's going to be a certain length, but then, you know, it's going to shrink up and then you're just right. going to look, you know, like accidental for a couple of weeks. Well, this brings up another thing, which is that like I know that like hair types is a very is a very hot button issue, especially for people of color, because like typically like it's it's a lot harder to find someone who understands how to deal with your hair texture so i imagine there are a lot of uh people uh like trans people non-binary people who are of color that like have an added level of anxiety going to get their hair done to try to express like how they want to look for sure like is there is there do you know of like a community like of of like uh, like hairstylists of color who are like under I don't even know what I'm asking. I, I know we I know you mean there's we actually talked about this a little in one of my classes that like there's been a bigger push obviously to hire more black actors on set, which mm. is great, but then you know, an actor will get hired as a kind of checkbox and then there won't be a black hairstylist sure. on set. Mm. Which is so insane to think about. Like that they have to do their own hair for like a big budget. Probably oh yeah, people people producers will like ask like, "Hey, can you do your hair beforehand?" They're like, "What the fuck? Yeah. I'm supposed to memorize my lines. What are you talking about?" There's right. uh, like the general way that textures are typically explained in the professional community is type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. And then within those, you know, there's 3A, 3B, 3C, mm -hmm. 4A, 4B, 4C, and that's curl type and then as well as the coil shape. And uh so uh, when you think about like the fact that a lot of times people won't have any experience with type three and type four, which is literally half the spectrum, it's wild. Mm. Um, but it is also like, it's a whole, the whole, the problem goes way back. I remember in beauty school, um, anytime a person of color came in to get their hair done, um, it wouldn't be on the normal list of students. It wouldn't go to the next person. They would go straight to a student that already had that hair type. And, uh, and that's, so from the very beginning, there's very few schools, um, at least when I was in school, um, that were like aware that everybody needs to be learning every hair type. Yes. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and it's, it's insane because it's thinking the other way, like somebody with coily hair typically knows how to also cut straight hair. And so the fact that it doesn't go the opposite way is really, it's sick. Um, but it's I, I know I've been on set a lot of times too, um, where like they'll they'll get the casting and then like people were like, Can Bailey do black hair? And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. I'm and I get why you're you're not sure, but it also sucks because most of the time you're also just assume that you can't. Um, yeah, because like what if you couldn't and they hired it, or like what if someone couldn't and they hired them and then they just had a bunch of black actors who with no hairstylists like but that I mean, if i was like a black model i would fully just assume that i'm gonna get fucked over if there's just a white stylist because yeah. that's usually what happens mm. yeah so you go to set to do actors hair i'm more like photo shoots oh um, photo shoots. Okay. Photo shoots and what is shows. what is that like um i mean it's fun i mean it's uh it's much more creative um, I've done fashion week for, for about 10 years or 11 years now. Um, and it's really cool to be involved in just because it's a thing that like a lot of hairstylists dream of being able to do. Mm. Um, it's a very, very high pace. It's very stressful. Um, it's also like the only part of the hair industry where I always like, even to, to, the, to this day, like when I'm at fashion week, I'm like, somebody's going to realize I don't belong here. Right. Like I still like respect it so much and it's such a challenge. It, it's the only thing that I like feel like still like really drives me to grow um, in that field. I have a question. So you mentioned like fashion week photo shoots. Like, have you worked on like film sets or things like that or very, very few. I may be okay. like less than five. OK. Of all like the different sort of like genres that require a hairstylist, uh, hairstylist, uh, which 
area has like the people whose hair who are the nicest people and who are the shittiest people yeah it was tell us about like stories if there's like any say like oh a photo shoot at this place oh these people are gonna be fucking out like where so yeah yeah i i it's wild like because a lot of people people will assume there's like a lot of like really toxic people but it's much like the the comedy community like there's so many people that are just shitty to be around Mm. and like would you book somebody that you don't even like to be near? Yeah, right. I, I right. Get what, and... If they were on a weekly show, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you murdered someone on the middle of the street and you booked a weekly show, people would be like, "Yeah." Maybe. Well, then you just have to show up. And right. That was a great, that was a great Trump impression right there because I feel like he said something. Really... <laughs> if you murdered somebody, but you were passed at the cellar. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter if they're doing photo shoots. Oh, there we are. comedy right. shows. <laughs> If they do get here, they're here. No. Trump, when did you get here? Can yeah. you do the voice without doing the hands? No. <laughs> it can't. No. It, it, I will say that I actually did uh, see. I, I remember like Shane. I saw a clip of Shane Gillis describing how he got the Trump impression. He said, no, it's because he puts Tanner on his hands and you have oh. to hold your hands like this. That's why he does that sort of hand motion. You can't and, do it without. It's like trying to put mascara on with your mouth closed. You can't do it. Mm. Yeah, it's a and I know it. Like test. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you have a friend who puts her mascara on with her mouth closed and she's going to murder you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She will be the first female serial killer. Actually, there have been other female serial killers. I should give women more credit. Exactly. Stop being. God. Why are you? Why are you just pushing the glass ceiling Audience, down I'd like further? To apologize God, on favorite. behalf of Gabby for <laughs> really trying to just pigeonhole what women are capable of. That is that is kind of what I love to do, and it's unfortunate that it's, it's your coming hobby. to light. On this I have the podcast. movie posters. You have ho- keeping women down. I, it's honestly, everyone has a guilty pleasure, right? I mean, <laughs> some girls like The Bachelor. Sorry, all women like The Bachelor because they're one. Stupid. all lives matter. What? <laughs> Oh, wait, Bailey. Actually, that that's an interesting pivot. Are there any Perfect. reality shows? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great pivot from me hating women. Do all lives matter? If not, which ones? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, let's you were really saying? deep dive into this. Uh, do you have like a do you have like a like, guilty pleasure reality show? Is there any like oh my gosh. thing like that you watch? Uh, obsessed with Survivor. Ooh, um, early seasons, late seasons. So over the pandemic, me and my girlfriend watched every single season. Oh, fuck yes. I watched up to 20 and then I think I stopped, but I, I want to get back into it. We So we started because um, we both actually had separate friends who were on different seasons. And so we wanted to see the Ooh. seasons that our friends were on. Mm. And then we were like, this show's amazing. And we went back to like the first ep- uh, season and just plowed through the whole thing over the nice. pandemic. Wait, who are who is your survivor friend? Uh, this guy, Josh. I, I used to go to oh, church Josh. with him. Classic um, Josh. He's this Broadway guy that um, I don't, I can't even remember Josh's last name right now, um, but just this really wonderful Broadway guy. Um, him and his boyfriend were actually on it at the same time did i meet him at a show i feel like i remember you said that you brought a friend who you did went to church or something he has not been oh you've okay. met yeah i mean i've had other like old church friends yeah, yeah, yeah. that um that i still talk to as that okay. uh had come but not like i haven't seen this josh okay, for a while gotcha. um but uh yeah him and his boyfriend were on one season and then um my girlfriend's right friend was on yeah. another season did you get it all into so like when pandemic started did you get into any like reality dating shows because i got yeah. hard into love is blind and okay yeah we so yeah we did love and Bl- love is blind um we did um what was it M- married at first sight oh my god um, oh, yeah. real just tragic um <laughs> uh i like love island um love island australia is the best because it's some somehow almost uh like almost cute like almost genuinely like cute like Aww. everybody was like really rooting for each other but then you watch the uk one and it's just trash i tried watching the uk one Ugh. i got in like season eight or something the one with danny dyer um i forget what a name danny yeah. dyer by the way named after her dad whose name is danny dyer d-a-n-n-y and then she's d-a-n-i yeah dare i say that's 
conceded. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Here I, I see that's conceded. <laughs> But yeah, I tried watching it and I just felt like my brain was melting. I was like, I can't, I, I just, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Like too hot to handle. That's my speed. Oh, no, it's yeah. Like, brain cells too hot to handle. Too hot to handle. No, but too hot to handle. It like, it doesn't take itself seriously. You can yeah. tell that they know exactly what kind of show they're making. They're yeah. making, it's like. And how stupid the people are. Oh my yeah. My favorite part of too hot to handle, I don't know if you watched, was uh, uh, on season one, there's a, there's a girl who pretty obviously falls in love with her female friend, and the female friend is in love with like some guy. I like, they had a threesome at one point. I don't I think, think they that had was a... another season. I didn't. Okay. I didn't watch the second. Oh, season. season two. There was like a three-way like kissing thing that happened in the first episode. Yeah, I, rem- I remember that, and that caused like a lot of drama. And then that dude got eliminated. But, yeah. <laughs> See, that caused a lot of controversy. Oh yeah. Like Twitter was like, they can't do this on TV. <laughs> That's <Fuck."> not pure. <laughs> They well, yeah, he was from Staten this. Island, so he he had to go from the beginning in my oh, mind. Classic. Yeah. But there was one girl who like kind of fell in love with this friend, but she couldn't just vocalize it to her, even though the friend was uh, also bisexual. I do remember this. Yeah. And she would just be like, w- wouldn't it be so funny if we just like told everyone in the game we were together? Like, wouldn't <laughs> mm. that be like so crazy? And the girl was like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty That's sad. crazy. Oh, I felt that for Yeah, it'd be crazy. Yeah, jokes. Jokes. <laughs> jokes. Oh. Super funny. I'm just, I'm quirky. <laughs> <laughs> the Q in LGBTQ stands quirk. for quirky. <laughs> Fun fact. Oh, my God. Oh, man. But Survivor, actually, someone wrote in about Survivor. and wanted, Really? Yeah, someone wanted us to talk specifically about Jeff Probst. Okay. Well, now just I need to watch opinion. the show. I'll just show uh, you what this man looks oh, like. Oh, okay, okay. Show me. Um, right. I'm just going to show whatever image I Google is exactly how he looks now because he's okay. never <laughs> aged in his entire life. Let's see. Yeah, 41 seasons. Oh, damn. And he just looks like he like maybe changed his hairdresser this, once. This guy could be, <laughs> be anywhere between 40 and 80 to me. <laughs> like he, I mean. Or 20. Yeah, or 20. Yeah, yeah. but this guy. Dad, that is, he's great bone structure. That dude is amazing structure. Face. He's very like, he will talk on the show, like to the contestants in a way that is so measured and thoughtful. And like, oh. for there, there's something about him that is so convincing. He's an amazing mm. communicator. Yes, that's what it is. He's yeah. a great communicator. He is reliable narrator. Yeah. Uh, it was actually, it was interesting this season uh, are you watching this newest season? I, I mean to catch up on it, but I have not watched it Quitter. yet. Um, <laughs> I hear there are, there are twists, new twists. There, oh yeah, it's it's a crazy. I mean, an actual game is different, but like it was like the first episode. They actually had a conversation about like gendered language and stuff, which was just like interesting to see in the show because I guess so. Jeff Jeff Probst like always says like, "Come on in, guys." At a certain point in the show, and I guess they had gotten notes that like, you know, do you have to say guys? I personally don't care that much about gendered language in that kind of way, you know, when people say dude or whatever, but like, I know a lot of people do get bothered by it. And so they had like a conversation on the show. Like, do you guys think that we should just take the word out? Should we pick a new word? It was just like interesting that they had hmm. that conversation on the show. Just the openness. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. It's also cool. interesting because then it becomes like the competitors not only say their honest opinions, but they also have to pick the opinion that makes them look best in the game. Oh, for sure. Mm. That's ev- like I remember when um I didn't watch this season, but like everyone on Twitter knew about it when like Zeke was outed. Um, oh yeah. As uh, there was someone on Survivor. Wait, who is Zeke? There's someone on Survivor who's named Zeke Smith. He's like a Brooklyn improviser actually, really funny guy and he was outed as a trans man by this like fucking, you know, North Carolina like boomer gay who's mm-hmm. just like an asshole and uh he w- was interviewed about it on Las Culturistas and he went on to say that like his first thought was like now everyone in the game's gonna be gunning for me because I have the sympathy vote like he couldn't oh. even think about oh no what is it like what does this mean for me emotionally that I've been outed on live tv he was like what does this mean for me and that's a game? good contestant Right. That, he, he's, he's an incredible committed. player. Something tragic ho- happened yeah. that will like I'll need therapy for a long time. But where I'm at in the the ratings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, speaking of ratings, The Circle, do you watch? Love. Okay. I, I Okay. I love The Circle. First season was by far the best one. By far. No because, question. Mm. Okay. Like, Joey and uh, Shubham, that relationship is so fucking adorable oh i know uh, and also i loved that joey seemed so intensely douchey when he first came on and i was just like fuck this guy and by the end i was like i might be maybe a little bi um, <laughs> i love this man um yeah the first season was so like it was so cute and it felt like uh it was like this like wholesomeness in the show mm. that like is totally gone after season one because after that everybody has like a lot of like mind games and shit that they're like way too focused on it's like you're ruining Mm. my precious circle the challenges get more intense too we i I, i've only seen like clips from the show i haven't seen and so i know that they have like challenges where they have to pretend to be other people like mid-show do they have to do that oh yeah what'll happen is someone will get eliminated and then they will like go into a room and they're like, all right, we're giving you a catfish profile and you have to be this person. Right. Yeah. I think that my strategy in the circle, I want to hear your strategy too. I think I would catfish as someone much older because I feel like that gets a lot of like, oh, that's so cute kind of like reaction. But when all, when like people cat when people play as themselves, sometimes it works, and sometimes people. I was are about like, to say you're doing a good job. Look at that top, <sighs> very old. <laughs> yeah, I'm being a. I'm actually 400 years old. Yeah. <laughs> so what would be your circle strategy? I this is gonna. This is I. I can't say this without feeling arrogant, but I would just be myself and just sort it out. I feel like I don't. I I don't feel like I'm threatening to anybody, but also like. I don't see like anybody like feeling like I'm gunning for their position in that kind of game. Mm. I feel like I could just be I don't know. I I I I would I would have to just play myself. Yeah. Are you gunning for us right now? Um I guess you'll find out. Between the two of us, who would you think you could catfish better as? Oh, that's a good question. Oh. I mean, I guess it, I mean it would uh, it would be Gabby just cuz like I I I'm well versed in lesbian. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you speak the language. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. How I'm barely I conversational. I, I couldn't. Oh, possibly Lucas, be you're a pretty Lucas. conversational. I lesbian. haven't practiced my verbs. Oh, I would call you a lesbro. A lesbro. Oh, that's thank a bro you. who's les. <laughs> who a bro who has a lot of dyke friends. Well, I got you. I got my friend. Oh, Look I have at this you. Room. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a room full of us. <laughs> I've reached my quota. Anyway. No. Yeah, two is too many. <laughs> yeah. Lucas is the uh, the cis guy that says cis the most. So, I mean. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, that'd be a good roast joke. That, I was thinking that's a good <laughs> that's roast, a good roast joke. joke. Oh my god! Something I wanted to ask, something I wanted to ask. Like you mentioned, like uh, Joey, you made me felt like a little bit by for him. Who was like growing up? Who was the like your sexual awakening? Like the first person in TV or film that made you go, "Oh, I'm into that." Yeah, I'm curious oh, about that too. That's a good question. Um, um, honestly, I think the, the first thing that comes to mind is Carmen Electra. Hot. Oh yeah. Um, just because she was like involved in like rock, you know, rock and roll kind of music scene way back. Um, yeah, and she wasn't like she kind of was like more like grungy vibe versus you know like typical mm. whatever. Yeah, I, I, that was that's like the only thing that really comes to mind is is yeah some something a little bit more like grungy hot versus like bombshell hot or whatever how old were you when you first like saw her i mean i was if i had to guess i'd probably say i was like nine or ten yeah why i mean i feel like it would have been through like honestly vh1 or something i don't know why i wouldn't it would it would definitely be around 10 i guess but who fucking knows would you say that was your sexual awakening I don't know if I would. The thing is, like, I think that 
it was like with her and like a couple others that like I don't really I can't think off the top of my head of but like I remember even at 10 I was like okay uh, I I want I want like she's hot but I also want to be that hot like right. I'm like mm. so like because I, I felt like I like I felt like I was wrong uh like I like wasn't born right like f- from before I was 10 and so I remember when I first started being like oh my god she's hot um and it's like I don't know if I'm going to end up that way and that sucks. Mm. And so it was like, it was double. It was double. It was like, okay. Did you have like when you were growing up, like a handle on what it, like what transness was or was it more of kind of an abstract feeling? I, I, I got to understand it pretty quickly. I actually have a joke about it, but like literally it was through watching Jerry Springer. Like that was like the only thing I and there was Jerry Springer and RuPaul and I remember even when I was like ten I would watch RuPaul and I was like that's not exactly it but like it's interesting that's how most <laughs> people feel watching RuPaul <laughs> yeah. it's like sm- that's not exactly it but it's close it's like smelling a simmering sauce like you're close but <laughs> Paramount Plus <laughs> <laughs> World of Wonder <laughs> I just got into RuPaul in quarantine so it's funny you, br- you bring him up but uh, I only did as well I started watching season six the one with Bianca Del Rio oh, where so she nice. wins that was I was like oh this is a juicy season yeah I love that one I think you should do a Bianca Del Rio impression sometime because I feel like mm. it's easy enough to do like she just like opens her eyes really wide yeah, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah i my favorite is adore delano ah, that, yeah. she's my favorite because like i don't want to say like she's dumb but kind of dumb and i i find it really entertaining she's like when to we were watch. talking about dobbins last week like she's smart dumb yes sure ditzy, like, like a ditzy persona when people like and when I think Dobbins, I think, oh, it's like Goldie Hawn, classic dits. <laughs> Such a dits. Just nothing behind the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Vacant eyes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but yeah, so you were you were kind of talking about like the language for it being like, that's not quite it when you saw like Jerry Springer. Well, I just remember. Well, so with Jerry Springer, like watching like talk shows where people were like revealing that like oh, your girlfriend's here, but she has a secret. And I was like, well, this sucks, but it's all I got. Um, And and I just remember being like, well, this is a bummer that this is my thing, but I got like, this is, this feels right. But uh, for so long at that Mm. point, it was like, all I knew it as is something that's wrong. And so, uh, but that was kind of like how I started to understand that there was this community that is out there, but it was really like the internet, like, and like, chat rooms and stuff Mm. that where i started to meet and like know of people that like seem like they were that and normal like i I, like myspace was Mm -hmm. really like Mm. when i first realized that like there there were people that i actually related to in this way i remember there was this girl that um i still know now that we met on myspace and before either one of us had transition and we were both like like super femmy like um like scene kids you know and uh but she was like even way back then she, she i just remember she was like super cool super hot and like i was like oh, you know fuck you um but like we were friends on myspace and then um i had lost contact with her because myspace stopped being anything and uh then a friend of mine um is a musician who's trans and there was a docuseries about her and uh my friend Isley from MySpace was in the docuseries uh as somebody that my other friend um had met online as well and so then I was like oh this is her new name and then I was able to find her and uh you know a couple years ago when I was out in LA we got you know got together and had lunch and it was crazy but um so like it was a lot about like finding community online that you're just like okay not only is there, there's plenty of other people that feel this way, but also like there are people that I would hang out with on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Nice. that's awesome. Power of MySpace for sure. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever have a MySpace, Lucas? I uh, it was it was before my time. Oh, was, uh, sorry. I'm uh, I'm I'm young, and uh, I just I never I never dealt with MySpace. Like it's it's kind of a boomer thing. Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know why for any for. <laughs> For some reason, when it's you, I'm like, oh, I should be quiet. I, like, I immediately yeah, think I I'm like, 
That's why I'm excited I'm just like, to watch sorry. your roast. <laughs> Actually, one of one of the ways I, I heard about the roast was because um, Chris was telling me about it, and she was like, man, I'm nervous to go up against Bailey. Like, I feel like I'm going to do jokes about her tattoos, and she's going to do jokes about what's wrong with my soul. Yeah. <laughs> I was I, like, I, that's true. I do want people to question um, why they're even here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Like on Earth, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not just this Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, Chris. Sure. Don't. Oh my God, I can't wait to see that battle. I can't wait to see that. It's so exciting. I love that the takeaway from uh, this podcast is Bailey's. Like, I guess what I'm looking forward to seeing it too. Bitch. I guess. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bailey's such a fucking bitch. That's the <laughs> thing. That's what oh we'll name God. the episode. Yeah. Is Perfect. there? Is there? Oh, is there like? Um, uh, anyone besides Chris that you would want to roast battle or a matchup between two other people that you really want to see? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would I would definitely like to roast Sasha Von D, who yeah. uh, is the co-producer on my show. That'll um, happen sooner or yeah, later. Yeah, we, 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 that's our relationship is is making each other feel bad. And um, so I can't wait for that one. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, it's really, it's the foundation, um, really. I who would I want to see battle each other? Um, I mean, there's so many people that I would love to see hurt each other. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I would actually, I don't know. Does, does Divya, um, she roasts. Does yeah. she roast? I think I've that seen she's her, yeah. such a good writer and I'd love to hear her. Write very good joke. Roast writer. Jokes. Um, just cause she's also very nice as a person, but I know that she could be brutal and like, I want to mm. hear her write roast jokes um literally about there is a Actually, roast battle of hers on youtube i did find one that she did if she roasted alex because they host uh, a mic and show together and, alex uh, kim yes alex oh, kim yeah. that would be really these good. are also all guests we've like had on the pod on zoom before mm. but we probably like want to get and it's just so interesting it's such a different animal doing it in person yeah oh yeah absolutely i mean like one of the i'm so glad i'm we're doing it in person because like very early on there was like a difference with like audio and video sample rate so i would have to like stretch out and squeeze like the video so oh, it matched sure. up with like the uh like locked time frames of the audio. it was just like oh, a, that wasn't my issue with it i just had a hard time paying attention i mean yeah. obviously it wasn't my issue with it eventually it's just a squid game dub. i'm the one who puts together the video and audio guys <laughs> lucas thanks but yeah, I yeah, I love it so much more in person. It's just like the, dealing with like lag as well is the worst. My high school lag. <laughs> LaGuardia. LaGuardia. Oh. <laughs> dealing with constantly lag. dealing with your high school <laughs> that I auditioned for and didn't get in. Did uh, you really? I did. Yeah, I oh, auditioned fuck for them. it. Oh my god. Well, fuck to be them. fair, I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even find out if I would have gotten a call back because like you auditioned for it and then you're supposed to like stick around. To see if you yes, got, yes, you are. Yeah, and my dad and I just left. <laughs> That's so funny. That's a year really kind of yeah. yeah. This place is ridiculous. Only thing I know about that school is that Madonna's daughter or yeah, 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 yeah. child went there. Um, I don't know if I don't know anything about the kids, so she, I forget. she's okay. she. I think she was in the Lourdes? year below me. Was it Lourdes? Lourdes, yeah. Okay. Oh, but she didn't yeah. like when people called her Lourdes. I remember this. So she went by Lords. What, Lawrence. You... <laughs> <laughs> it was Lawrence. <laughs> Lor I just had a thought. Lawrence Pugue. Like Florence Pugue. <laughs> Did you say Pugue? Is that not how you say it's it? It's Pew. Oh, God. Why the fuck? Then what are those other two letters doing there? She's doing it all wrong. Are you just now learning about language? <laughs> yeah. Silent letters? Any, uh, you know, you Thanks can know. Lag. Wait, do you see, wait do you see how the word rough is spelled. That's going to throw you for a loop. Uh, Yeah, R... W. Oh my God! Wait, no. It's hard. <laughs> yes. You know what? Okay, I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna admit something vulnerable. I've always had an issue, like when you're when you're asked to spell something out loud. Mm. I've, I'm a really good speller on paper. Wait. But I've always had an issue saying it aloud. I'm okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little uh, test. Okay, here I'm gonna spell a word. Just I'm gonna say the letters, and I want you to tell me just. Just say the word. What if it's correct? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's here's the word. E y e s. Say it. Eyes. <laughs> oh. Okay. You got it okay, right. Okay. I got it right. Wait. Do another one. There's oh, no. I I don't have another one. But here's the, that's like it's kind of like an internet challenge because like there are people that you say like e y e s and they're like 
A yes, E yes, and and then like for minutes they don't get it until the person says it's eyes, and they're like, oh, and it's just a way I've like seen people. Videos yeah, of yeah, that. yeah, I love it. I did that to my cousin, and she couldn't say it. She didn't know. Your she couldn't say eyes. Fucking moron. The human yeah, brain fuck is Fuck you, insane. Ella. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, yeah, no, but seriously, like there are people that just like it's just they don't get the visual of what the word looks like just from saying the letters and forming it in their mind. They can't do it. Oh, I think the way that they did it is they're like, okay, uh. What is, so you repeat, you go, Y-E-S. What is that word? People say yes. Y-E-S. And you're like, yes. Okay, what is E-Y-E-S? Like, oh, oh, okay. And yes. they're like, yes. And they're e like, yes. really? <laughs> That's like that joke in Drake I... and Josh that was like, say fork, say fork. It's this girl says fork like a million mm. times. And then uh, they're like, all right, how do you eat soup? And they're like, with a fork. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then, then Miranda like, Cosgrove is like, really? I use a spoon. Oh, my God. And then she fucking drops the mic and runs away. And Josh Peck is so mad. Oh, that, that was a good so moment. Good. <laughs> Did you not see that? <laughs> I have familiar. No fucking clue what you're talking about. You know about. what it was like when you guys were talking about Survivor. That's what it was like for me. I was like, yeah, OK. This is. Uh, oh, but yeah. you'd like it. It I know honestly I was the perfect quarantine show. It's so I, good. I don't know if you feel this way where it was like in the thick of quarantine. I wasn't doing a lot of stuff. I was just inside most. And it was nice to imagine like. Being in nature, being completely off your screen time, just mm. like around other people socially. Right. <laughs> you should go to a park. <laughs> I've heard of I've heard of those. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've thought about that. What what is what is that? I'm not. Familiar. They they got uh, they got tall trees there. There's sticks on the ground. There's leaves. Spell there's, park. Uh, <laughs> uh, Q. <E-Y. laughs> Q yes. pound sign square uh squirrel emoji uh <laughs> you just spelled eyes <laughs> Duh. you silly goose no i had to, i remember when i was in middle school i did a uh, spelling bee i got to the city wide level of Ooh. the spelling bee and then i lost on the word cosmetologist i thought it was cosmos not cosmetics and I, I said, C-O-S-M-A-T? And they were like, no, it's E-T. I was like, and you suck, Lucas. And I was like, yeah, oh. You'll never be anything. Yeah. <laughs> and while you're at it, leave the country. <laughs> That's what they said. Now I want to see, like, just people being really mean to a middle schooler. Like, yeah, you're going to amount to nothing in life. Just, like, <laughs> just really mean Don't shit. Don't see it. Be it. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of change you want to see in the world, I think our listeners uh, have some change they want to see us make in their world. And so, Bailey, I don't know if you know about this, but we get listener submissions in, and we want your advice for our listeners. So ready. On whatever they say. Let me find this form. God damn it. We're, it's not coming up on my phone nowadays because m- – iPhones hate gay people. <laughs> Tim Cook that. aside. Yeah. He's yeah, he's the only gay allowed with Apple devices. <laughs> he's kind of a he's kind of a straight gay anyway. Elaborate. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I refuse. Uh okay, I'm pulling up drive. Talk amongst yourselves, audience members. Now, I'm probably gonna cut this out. Um Come on. Is there an actual person playing the piano in the house right now? No, that no, person's been life. dead for 50 <laughs> years. Heck. Piano, but she died 20 years ago. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay. Ooh, new submissions. Um, oh, okay. Oh, um, all right. This part. Okay, so I have one pulled up. This is a throwback to two or three weeks ago. I forgot to submit something to follow up. So I told my best friend I liked her and she didn't. And she told me she didn't like me back that way. There's a lot of it is like middle school and high school drama. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so fucking ready. she I told me so dra- like dramatic. At that oh, age. yeah. Oh, my God. What was Ooh. the what, what, briefly tell us like something uh, like the most drama you had at that time? Or uh, like... OK, I so in, in middle in junior high, um, I ha- I was for with the this layman. girl for. <laughs> uh for basically most of junior high but like uh over the summer we broke up because we just weren't seeing each other and so i got so sad that i just started like walking to her house so that we could see each other so that she didn't have a reason to break up with me and then like i used oh i was so much i was so clingy um i remember uh 
I had my over summer one um, over one summer I was at church camp I like fell for this girl Stephanie and then uh, in my head I'm like I guess this is it we're together now she like lives like an hour away from Mm. me and so then uh once we once the week was over uh you know we talked on the phone a couple times but she like a little bit by little was like you don't live anywhere near this is over and so then i got a friend to drive me to her house and then she wasn't like count like child camp in love uh, anymore and i was just like what happened and i was oh broken no oh my god i was such a, just a, such a little pussy that's so understandable <laughs> just so much someone should have told you that oh, <laughs> somebody so, should someone should have been like what are you talking oh about it's camp it's was fucking up. ages ago <laughs> dude <laughs> well oh you'll be God. able to advise this person then. okay yeah so um okay so uh I uh, told my best friend I liked her. She told me she didn't like me back that way. I shot my shot and we're still besties. She was understanding and told me that this won't change anything. How I act around her is still the same as I always have. I just loved that I was my authentic self around her. Whenever I like or date someone, usually I don't act myself and I'm just awkward. And I try to play down my silliness and personality. With her, I don't have to because she knows me. I'm glad we're still friends. And thank you, Lucas and Gabby, for being supportive and encouraging. When Lucas said he wanted to give me a hug, that really meant a lot. But this is just wholesome. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, boo. Fuck this. You got your advice. Buddy. I like that. Fuck this you. one was fuck like, you. I actually already have this one figured out. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Oh, there's there's this. This is okay. Here's some gossip. (laughs) Do you want to go? Sure, sure, sure. Um, So my gossip is that there was a guy I was paired with. uh, What? For no reason, I might add. (laughs) I want to know the setting. Was it school? Was it the church? (laughs) What? No reason. There's no setting. They're in liminal space. (laughs) I was paired with them for no reason. Give us a a non-geographical location. (laughs) (laughs) Why is that breaking me? Just paired with them. Uh, tw- I might I add just twelve year olds being twelve year olds. Okay, so this person is twelve, and it stuck. Like even the teachers got into it, and this is in India, mind you, for four years. Okay, so this person is sixteen. Neither of us dated each other or anyone, and kind of became friends only because we had to, because we were fighting too much. Wait, they were fighting what? now. What is I need? Oh, so oh, many oh wait! Have... Again, that's apparently what you do with someone you're paired with. Okay, so okay. they would get paired together all the time, and then like for class. Oh, just and to, okay, stuff, okay, okay, okay. And okay. then they would argue. We were civil people in the end, with some deep co- convos added to the mix because teenage angst. Fast forward five years later. Now, okay, so this person is twenty one. <laughs> okay. Um. Still holding on to the past week. I think the person's name is Held. Held, literally, that's what it says. Wait, where, where did held? Held. Fast forward five years. Yeah, you you read their. <laughs> um. Flat. Now held. Okay, held changed uh, schools in the same city, and for his birthday, his friends compiled a bunch of videos from people. Mind you, the guy is a social charmer and evil. Oh my God! Stop changing your opinion. Jesus. I sent one too. Okay, you sent a video. I happen to be good friends with his friend who stayed over and he messaged me that this guy thought my video stood out and was very cute. Okay, I also found out that the gift I had given him two or three years ago is kept on his desk. Okay, because my gifts are amazing and you get and you only get like one in five years. But apparently 17 is not much different from 12 in terms of maturity because that's all my match can talk about now. We don't even go to offline school. I'm only sane because my only social is YouTube. Now imagine you are me and that guy. I'm sorry. I just want your take on it and laugh to it on IG. I'm sorry. You sound crazy. (laughs) (laughs) I love the fact that you guys clearly don't vet these um, no, no, not at all. Read no. these ahead of time. You're just no. like, no one let's pick one that is the least grammatically <laughs> understandable. Oh yeah, they get, <laughs> they get. There's so there, we've had ones that were like so detail rich, we lost track of them midway just through reading them. <laughs> in but my this, head, there are also no periods or commas in that whole thing. Very few. <laughs> very few. Well, this one I think is especially impeccable because it feels like you know how they. If you feed a robot like a bunch of words <laughs> and it eventually spits out something that like kind of makes sense. Like yeah. to me, it feels like that happened. 
I think there's no advice to give. Just no. I just I hate the person who wrote this. I I, <laughs> I, I don't I don't oh, really I hate don't you. Hate but them. no, I actually, I'm this feels a little bit like when like a child is telling you something, and then and and then yeah. and then, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 then but, <laughs> from, but he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Does your kid do uh. that? No, not anymore. I mean, it yeah. was a little bit when they were younger, but like. Right. I got nothing from this so far. Uh, yeah. So this person is either 12, 17, 21. <laughs> uh, they, Every age, they, no age. Um, are in love or hate uh, this <laughs> person that has the gift um, <laughs> on a desk. That's what I got. Um, I think that you should continue to love and or hate this person um, at whatever age that you tend to be oh, five God. years from now. And that's advice from Bailey. That's advice from Bailey. Wait, we might have a real one. Okay, and let's that- do one more and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Um, Wait, where did it go? We need so- brevity. We need brevity on our side with this. <laughs> In my group of friends, two friends were dating and they broke up five months ago. One of the two is celebrating his birthday next week and a friend of ours is not coming because he doesn't want to. I've is- lost track already. <laughs> the thing is, he is closer to... The ex-girlfriend of the birthday boy than the said boy. I never said that's why he's not coming, but I never not said that too. I'm legit so lost already. I, never, I actually am so on. No, no, no. I'm, I'm still oh, there. Okay, okay, okay. I'm still there. Keep going. <laughs> did you? Did you that's finish? That's the end. Okay. That's the end. Well, Bailey, what was your take on that? That that was not a question. Um, <laughs> the, there was no request for information. Um, it clearly just sounds like uh, there was a party. Not everybody showed up. Is that what where we're at? <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. But but you missed the part where uh, someone didn't show up because they didn't want to, and it may or may not have been because the ex girlfriend is a friend of the person who didn't oh, show up. I think I think uh, I don't know if it means that uh, this person and the ex girlfriend are dating, or they just might be like. I, people, oh, people. I think that this person is speculating that yeah, the yeah, two yeah. people are dating. That it's they all, are yeah. dating now. Oh, wait. But they were dating. There was so there's an ex, and yes. the ex is thinking that there's a new relationship. Yeah. yeah. So there's okay. an ex. The the ex boyfriend. It's it's his birthday. Ex girlfriend is no longer there, but there's a friend who is close to the ex girlfriend who's also not showed up. My advice is that there's no faster way to get over a previous relationship than just to go back to forming a platonic relationship like just pull off the band-aid mm. or know that like it'll never be comfortable to actually have your friend group as is mm. do you mean form a platonic relationship with the person you were dating like, like everybody should show up to the like don't don't not show up just because you're like uncomfortable oh. that there's, there's yeah, like, yeah, a yeah. new relationship like just get the fuck over it has that yes. happened to you i mean yeah i mean i i i had so many relationships growing up and uh i was always the one to get broken up with um mm. which sounds sad i, I i'm de- i'm desperate uh, so uh you should try breaking uh, up with someone, isn't it? <laughs> it sounds wonderful i've seen they seem really happy when they do it ah uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have friends, some of my, some of my closest friends for a long time were like exes, mm. um, like a friend of mine, uh, we had actually dated twice growing up. And then after a while, we we're like, we don't want to stop hanging out, but like, this isn't like, we're not like a, a relationship, like vibe. We're just like, actually like, like perfect to hang out. That's a good, healthy response. I, I'm not like friends with pretty much anyone i've there is but there is one person who like uh we went on like three dates and then afterwards she was like hey i think you're a great guy i just don't really feel like this and we were planning to go see avengers endgame and uh and i had already bought the tickets she was like i i I realize this is like out of the blue please give the second ticket to someone else i don't want to impose at all and i was like hey, I actually kind of feel the same way, but do you still want to see the movie together? I'd still love to go with you. That's she was awesome. like, oh, I'd love to. And then like we we then went to see like uh, Spider-Man afterwards and we just like sent each other memes and stuff. And I 
And like a few months down the line, I messaged her. I was like, hey, I'm not usually like friends with people I've dated, but I really enjoy this and I really like value you. She's like, oh, thanks so much. You too. It was like a very, it was just like a nice, happy, like friend ending. It was good. So the Avengers was not your end game. I mean, I'll, no, I like that No, it one. was not. Take- <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, you saying you like it makes me feel like you liked it even less. I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> And I understand why, and I deserve it, oh. and and I and I earned it. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we are coming towards the end. Of, Already? Yeah. I know. You it only feels do fast. two hours. Or- yeah. <laughs> sometimes we do four but just oh, yeah. for the sake of time yeah and so we have a thing uh, at the end of our podcast called self-perception corner where we ask our guests to describe how they believe they are perceived by other people and then we say how we actually perceive our guest oh fun okay <laughs> uh i oh, that's such a big thing to ask um i how do i so i think that um people think that i'm harsher than i actually am um and that uh i'm like more i think people think that i'm uptight um whereas i i i wish people thought that i was like very flexible in like i don't know I was, okay i think that i'm perceived as um of as harsh and uptight um and maybe that i try too hard hmm mm. It's funny because I'm going to go ahead and say I actually perceive you the opposite way. Uh, I feel like maybe you're just saying that because you have tattoos. But yeah, I feel like I always perceived you as very approachable. Your wit is cutting and it does. It can. That part can be a little intimidating. But I also think you seem like wise and willing to give advice. And like, okay, maybe maybe this is just because I know you have a kid. But like nurturing in your way i i, I oh hope yeah you so. are yeah I, you I definitely mean, are that's one of the first things that sasha ever said to me was, was like that like he had a dream about me one time that uh we were somewhere and i was just trying to make sure somebody else's kid was safe and i was like trying to talk to this parent about like he had a dream about me taking care of a stranger's kid that's, wow that which is super sweet kind of weird but super sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I see that for you. I feel like I got like strong mom energy from mm. you right away. Oh yeah, I never felt cooler than than that. <laughs> yeah, I will also I will add on to that just like a very strong element of bravery. I see. I see, like especially like hearing like sort of like events of like you growing up. Like I see you as someone who's like even just like to pursue like beauty school instead of like more typical means of like college or other things like i see like just a a lot of confidence and self-trust that's a lot that i see from you and that you like choose to like inspire and other people i i see that for you i really appreciate confidence bravery and like self-trust yeah Hmm. well this is a much sweeter end than i expected (laughs) (laughs) yeah we were gonna end on uh insult perception corner but Mm. we decided against it insult perception corner is just where we call the guest a bitch for two hours yeah that's what i'm used to that's what i'm used to (laughs) yeah it gets repetitive that's, that's actually why we came what up my with daily this. affirmations look like oh that's oh. beautiful yeah. oh bitch yeah. <laughs> you're a bitch you're worth nothing i love you let's go <laughs> yeah. viewers you are a bitch do you have anything to plug before we end yes please uh the so the show i'm, I'm just super excited about fun gutter i'm so mm-hmm. excited about cobra that too. cobra club uh november 12th at seven there's uh the ticket um link is online on my ig hell yeah very good very exciting this has been a super fun episode thank you so much for coming on uh to the podcast uh do you have anything to plug um this is coming out on monday yes that's when i turn to a pumpkin again and become unbooked (laughs) (laughs) i don't have anything to plug at the moment uh, I'm gonna have a show on Friday, but but by that time it'll be back in time. You'll have to time travel again, yeah. There, which you won't. So if there do. are time travelers listening to this episode, this is the episode for you. Yeah, and uh, we we don't usually appeal to their demographics. Come see our that. show in yeah. the past. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you, Lucas? Yeah. Uh, me, I uh, I do have some shows. I'm gonna be opening for Ben Brainerd uh, in a few shows around New Jersey, Connecticut, and then at Caroline's. Uh, in mid-November so those um, ticket links will be are on my website 
And I also have a roast battle coming up on November 10th. Uh, t- uh, ticket info also on my website, lucastarnold.com forward slash comedy. Uh, and yeah, that is it for me. All right. We've been Two Nose Meerkats. This has been Bailey Pope. Still is Bailey Pope. And will be Bailey Pope in the future. Forever. <laughs> yeah. And thank Horrifying. You- <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. We'll see you next time.